is my pleasure to introduce Secretary Marcel de Mores de Bonfilho, uh, Secretary of International Relations at the Ministry of Finance since 2016. Uh, Secretary Stefan Fidi was previously Chief of Mission at the IMF for the Western Hemisphere, where he held numerous positions in a distinguished career. He subsequently served as Chief Economist at Tudor Investment Corporation and also as an economist at the U.S. Federal Reserve Board. Uh, Secretary Stefan, we look forward to your remarks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, is the, okay. Can I move here? Okay. Thank you. It's a great pleasure to be here for many reasons. There's a personal one, because for several years I was studying two train stations away from the great University of Harvard, and they were always very welcoming. So it's a pleasure to be back here um, in Harvard. Unfortunately, not as a, as, a, as a graduate from Harvard, but as someone that always had a very special connection to the place. So thanks so much for the invitation. Um, it's, it's a great pleasure to be here, in particular because, like I joke, um, this is the first job I, get, I got in Brazil after 26 years living abroad. So it's a great job. I mean, uh, Brazil is, in a, in a, is facing a historic moment, uh, a moment of transition, a moment where we are moving away from policies that were not quite consistent in, macro, in terms of macroeconomic um, theory or what macroeconomic theory would teach us to policy they are consistent. So we are basically doing policy for the long term. And it's quite exciting to be in a situation like that, and that's the reason why I accepted the offer to join the government. In this presentation, I would like to first talk a little bit about the economic environment that we have right now. I will discuss briefly the global economic conditions and how Brazil relates to these economic conditions, and also some of the reforms that we are implementing in the country right now. The first message, and I think it's quite clear by the recent data we have got, is that the deep recession that we faced is behind us. Um, this recession of the last two years is the largest of measured uh, Brazilian history. Uh, certainly uh, was actually, um, there was a, deeper was a deeper recession during the Great Depression in Brazil. But what we saw in the data for the first quarter so far is that economic activity has begun to turn around. So in this chart, what you see is that we actually expect that by the end of the year, if you compare to the fourth quarter of 2016, uh, GDP is going to have grown in Brazil by about 2.7%. That's our forecast. Uh, you are going to discuss what are the conditions for that to happen. Um, people focus a lot on average growth. So average growth, we forecast about 0.5. That's uh, the marvels of algebra, which irritates me a little bit, but I know everybody looks at average growth. But um, for the year, we do expect a recovery, and the market has about what, what we have as well. Some people a bit more, some people a bit less. A key reason why we have such a forecast is because of the great success of the current central bank administration to bring inflation to the center of the target band. Uh, data is pointing that um, inflation is going to be at the band, at the target, probably by now. So around, and the target in Brazil is around 4.5%. Some indicators of core inflation, so if you take out things that move headline but can be temporary, are also coming down. In particular, service inflation is coming down uh, significantly. And it seems that it's converging also to this four and a half uh, 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 level. So that basically opened up space for the central bank to continue cutting interest rates, and that's going to give uh, a boost to economic activity. So on the cyclical side, this is good news. So I would say that to sum up, the, the increasing signs of economic activity is turning around. Growth is still unbalanced. We, we should see uh, the labor market turning around probably by the second half of the year, it's still too early. It's a known fact in economics that the labor market tends to lag economic activity. We saw in one of the previous months, recent months in February, that employment increased in Brazil. That's the first time in, in, in many, at certainly two years. Um, and um, 
So I think we are going to see from now on some months increasing, maybe other months stabilizing employment. And then by the se second part of the year, we should see the unemployment rate closer to the end of the year declining as well. So we are in that phase that we see green shoots, the economic is recovering, and it's going to take a couple more months to see all the indicators turning around. Um, now, basically, in the medium term, we do see economic activity growing between 25 and 3% if you go to 2018 and going forward. And that's conditional on our rigorous fiscal policy to continue. We, we intend to do so. And, uh, and the structural reforms that we are planning to pass, to continue to pass. And here is a source of upside risk, as we are going to see later. Now, as Secretary for International Affairs, I'm always looking at global risks. I actually par pass most of my time abroad, not in Brazil. So um, I would say that the risks from the global economy to Brazil are relatively balanced. Trump has changed uh, economic policy in the US, or at least has talked about it. And uh, in the trade part, I can see that being a source of worry for several countries. I don't quite see that uh, being the case for Brazil. Um, because of the particular situation Brazil has in the, in the economic relationships with the United States. Um, another area, one area that maybe could be a source of some worry is faster growth in the US, which on average is good. It's going to be good for everybody. It's going to be good for Brazil. But there's a chance the Fed rates could rise faster than currently priced by the market. In that situation, experience says the 10-year yields tend to go up and that tends to affect asset prices in Brazil somewhat. So we are keeping an eye on it. Um, the Brazilian financial sector is quite well capitalized. We don't see any source of risks there. Uh, financial conditions seem to be easing. We see uh, a decline in leverage, both by uh, firms and, and households. So we are pretty confident that if something like that happens, the Brazilian economy can take it. But it's a risk. Then there's the whole discussion on the trend on commercial pro protectionism. Yes, that's, that's a really bad trend that we see several governments uh, uh, espousing it. That's certainly not the case in Brazil, as you, we are going to discuss. This administration is definitely pro-trade, and we are working toward strengthening Brazil's uh, relationship with the rest of the world. On the positive side, the commodities outlook have improved, so that's good news in particular for firms involved in the production of metals and, uh, and other commodities in Brazil. That's just to be clear that we do tend to look more at a Fed funds rate and Fed's policy as mattering more for the Brazilian situation than what's happening elsewhere uh, in the world. Uh, in this scenario, the balance of payment should remain robust, which will anchor market confidence. Uh, we do see some worsening in the trade balance because we see a recovery of the Brazilian economy, but that's a minor worsening. Uh, the trade balance is still going to be strong, in particular, again, helped by the movements in commodity prices and external demand, which is going up, like Joaquin Levio was describing, how, how all the um, major international organizations have marked up a little bit the forecast for growth this year next. That's going to help Brazil. Now, like one of my preferred Nobel Prize winners have said, um, times, they are changing, and they are certainly are changing in Brazil. Um, some of these changes you already know. It's like in the pocket, water under the bridge. You can choose your metaphor. Um, we passed a public spending cap, which is quite important to stall the bad di that dynamics that we, we, we saw when we joined the government. Uh, we are discussing now a social security reform, which is quite important, so that that public spending cap is actually uh, able to survive uh, the fiscal pressures. We are issuing several microeconomic measures, and we also have a new angle for infrastructure investment. So let's talk a little bit about those things. Net public debt has been increasing since 2013 in a very marked way. Uh, of course, the recession and the decline in fiscal revenues is an important factor in this, in this movement. 
That's a cyclical reason, pretty obvious. But there has been a growing public spending as a share of GDP as well since the early 1990s, and that's a fundamental problem that I think the majority of Brazilian society has uh, decided to tackle. Um, so medium to long-term debt sustainability is now a central part of our government and is uh, uh, a commitment that is unshakable. So the government is completely committed to deliver its target on the primary deficit and also to respect the, the, the fiscal spending ceiling. So let's talk about a bit about the spending ceiling. Um, now public primary spending will equal previous year's levels adjusted for inflation. So spending as a ratio to GDP is set to decline. Um, the limit applies to all primary spending, including all three branches of government. So it's quite equalitarian in tightening the belt of everybody. Like I said, um, but okay, that's very well. I mean, we locked ourselves into this path. Now, how can we deliver? First step is to, to reform Social Security. Why? That's the biggest, one of the biggest part of our expenditures, if you look at the Brazilian budget, and is one that is growing and growing at a very rapid rate. Brazil right now is a pretty young society, but that's changing quickly. So we need to do this now. The, the key aspects of the, security, the social security reform, for those that study Brazil, are very well known. We're introducing minimum retirement ages. We are changing replacement rates to something that's more actuarially fair. And we have some transition rules respecting acquired rights of older work, workers. This is being discussed right now and being negotiated in Congress right now. The way that we see right now the negotiations is that we are going to have good savings from the reform that is being discussed. So the changes we have seen so far, is they are natural, they are part of the democratic process, and they, the reform that's going to come out of this is still going to be a very strong reform that is going to help us underpin the adjustment in the fiscal accounts. That's, this chart here shows the urgency of social security reform. It basically so, shows the share of social security benefits for private sector workers, so just part of the people receiving social security benefits as a ratio to GDP. The red line shows a projection if nothing happens, if you don't have any change, and goes all the way to 2017. Under the original proposal of the government, we see that staying at 8% stable. Um, let's see what's going to happen after the negotiations are over, but we certainly expect a line that's well below the red line. Now, I, 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 very important uh, uh, in Brazil now to discuss productivity. Productivity growth has been declining everywhere in the world, and you see that in documents written by international organizations, by research of academics, so it's not a Brazilian feature, but it's certainly a very important issue in Brazil. In these last few years, we actually saw productivity declining in the country, and Brazil needs to catch up to the most developed countries in the world. For that, we need to do much better in terms of productivity growth. So what is the government doing to, to bring this about? He listed several of the reforms that we have done so far, and some that are just being discussed right now. So let's focus, for instance, on the first one. There is facilitating tax compliance. Uh, it's very well known, and Joaquim Levy gave a very nice presentation describing how business environment in Brazil need to improve. One of the things that need to improve is exactly the, how, the, the, the cumbersome tax system. It does take a lot of effort to understand how the tax system works in Brazil. Some of you are foreign investors and know that. And, and how to simply declare income if you are a corporation. So we are working on that. We are actually closing a program with the World Bank that is pretty much based on uh, getting support to changing state level and municipal level procedures and federal level procedures, including just modernizing the machinery uh, that is needed to, to, uh, to manage taxes, uh, revenues in Brazil. So that's one thing that we are doing and, and we, are, we are 
moving forward very quickly in the second half of the, this year, in particular once the help of the World Bank is, is cemented. Uh, we are doing things to curtail red tape as part of several programs. We are aiming at diminishing the number of days it takes to open a business in Brazil. It still takes, by some measures, some 90 days or more, uh, by others a bit less. But we are really aiming to have something in the low digits, so less than 10 days. And that's also part of, of, of the agenda of this government. Um, we have done things to uh, facilitate the life of exporters and importers. Um, and very importantly, we are discussing right now in Congress reforms of labor rules. Uh, those reforms are very important. In Brazil, sometimes it's hard for firms to even understand what is the labor cost of their operations. There is enough uncertainty, and this uncertainty is resolved by uh, tribunals, is it re by the legislative power. and very often um, uh, at the cost, a very high cost for the firms. So what these reforms are basically doing are bringing back, bringing back to the level of negotiation between firms and employees some of the rules of day-to-day -day labor. Things like when can you take your break for lunch, if transportation to work is part of your uh, work week or not. If it's that, anyway, this may seem small stuff. But there were things that were opening up uh, firms to, to liability uh, costs. And the idea is exactly to bring some flexibility to this, to this relationship and some security. And uh, we, we just passed the, the, a law that allowing uh, more broadly um, uh, tertiarization, how do you say, uh, outsourcing. Um, and that also goes in the direction of facilitating flexibility in the workplace. We are starting a discussion within the Ministry of Finance, but also, very important, with other ministries and with Brazilian society, including uh, uh, firm associations and industries, uh, industry associations. I think there's a time to rethink our relationship with the rest of the world. Here, again, just to be very clear, that's a policy that is done, decided by a collegiate in Brazil. Many ministries are involved, very important, the Ministry of Foreign Relations, the Ministry of Industry and Commerce. Uh, we are going to talk to uh, industrial organizations like the FIASP the, and, and other uh, institutions. That's a movement that we think it's time for us to first think uh, a bit deeper about the overall economic health and the welfare of consumers when we decide how to do trade policy in the country. I mean, this is a talk for many years, nothing that's going to be decided this year, probably not even next year. But it's time to think about also how to make Mercosur be more integrated with the rest of the world. Um, so for instance, we are really very favorable of strong trade agreements um, uh, right now, especially with the European Union, which is a major partner of Brazil, and right now the Ministry of Foreign Relations is involved in, in very serious uh, conversations with the European Union to try to bring to a conclusion this, this long negotiation. We are working, for instance, toward joining the OECD. That is still not a complete government uh, 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 agenda. We are working toward that. We are starting discussions with the OECD. I think it makes sense. Brazil is a key partner for that institution. And I think it's time, uh, and, and the institution, I think, is happy to receive Brazil. It's time for us to bring our relationship with all multilateral organizations, but in particular this one, which are, we are a key partner, but not a full member, to another level. Toward other ways to finance infrastructure investment in Brazil, as was discussed here before, the need for infrastructure investment is really dire in the country. Uh, again, the World Bank has been a great partner, and uh, including with a partnership with the BNDES in this uh, infrastructure bonds uh, a fund that was described by Joaquin in the presentation before. But you're also looking for support from the new development bank, for instance. It's a new bank. Brazil is one, one of the founders. We have, have five members that has the unique mission to finance infrastructure investment in the country. I'm actually the chairman of the board of directors, meaning we do have a lot of say in the corporate governance of the place. And uh, we are basically directing the, the, uh, the, the, the bank toward uh, 
a lean structure really focused on financing infrastructure investment. And we are going to continue to defend multilateralism and Brazil's strong position in international organization. So uh, we believe that that should be the way that the world should go. Now, overall, the object of all this, and you are going to see another chart about business conditions in Brazil, is to move Brazil from that red spot there in 2017 further to the right. You see there a shorter ratio between GDP per capita and doing business indicators. So we'd like to bring Brazil toward that regression line there, but moving to the right. That's the idea of all these reforms. For that, we also, you know, like I said before, raise infrastructure investment. A program of concessions was announced in September 2016 that includes roads, railways, port terminals, mining, power generation, and distribution and sanitation. And new auctions infrastructure are going to happen periodically. Actually, very recently, there were very successful uh, auctions of airports administration in the country where it was transparent, the rules are very clear, there were several bidders, and that made the winners of the bids happy and the government very happy. More is going to come. We have changed also rules for the oil and gas sector, in particular, very recently. We reduced the amount of local content requirement for new oil field auctions. That's important. Uh, we, we don't share the views of, uh, that sometimes has been prevalent in Brazil, that to create jobs nationally, we need to, quote unquote, protect them directly. That has been a part that has backfired. And uh, by the extent that we raise the cost of production, we actually damage the ability of, of the country to produce jobs. So this measure goes in that direction, to support job creation in the country. So to conclude, the main scenario is certainly for a brighter 2017. You can say, oh, that's easy to say because 2016, 2015 were so bad, so anything is going to be brighter. But it's more than that. It's not just a cyclical recovery. It's actually a change in attitude, and it's a change in policies with an eye for the medium term. So economic reforms will pass. The government's uh, uh, support base in Congress is strong. The negotiations are important. It's part of democratic life. But we are working hard to make sure that we can actually pass the reforms in time for, for 2018 to be an even better year. Uh, so I would say do not get spooked by noise uh, that you see during the reform approval and during the recovery. These are the only signs that Brazil is a very vibrant democracy. And that's the way it should be. I wouldn't have any other way. Of course, there are many doubts about the exact strength of the recovery. I would say that those doubts will be solved as the quality of the approved reforms are revealed. So what I would expect this year is a year of uh, a continuous increase in, co in business confidence. Um, and uh, I think we may be wrong about growth next year. It may be bigger than 3%, but I'm being careful. So I'm, I'm waiting to see the reforms passed. So I'm going to stick to the 25 to 3%. Thank you very much.